Well, I talk to lots of people, and I love to go to conferences. And so this is a presentation I tell, I give to other people um, at other conferences. So I gave this talk to um, the High Altitude Revegetation Society, and uh, High Altitude Revegetation Conference, which is a partnership with the Rocky Mountain Society for Ecological Restoration. It's at CSU. Um, but essentially, what I'm trying to do here is tell people what is CONIPS, what are CONIPS. And um, we have a very interesting audience that does not reflect the audience we normally have. So before I get going, I want to get to know you. Um, and you're going to have to participate, so warm up. Um, if you are a brand new member, can you stand up? Or not a member yet? Welcome. We have both in our virtual meeting and in the, uh, sorry, I forgot to put this on the Zoom. See, I can do many things at once. Um, hopefully the Zoom people can see that now. Uh, what I am finding is that the more I reach out beyond our membership, the more people want us. They are hungry for the knowledge that we share when we hang out together. And so, in preparation for this conference, I really invited everybody, um, not just our members. And uh, across the virtual attendance and the live attendance, roughly 30% of the people here are not even members yet. So I hope you get to know them at lunch and really get to find out more about them. So before I go in with the slides, let's, do, let's make some music together, okay? So I'm gonna ask you if you like to do stuff and you're gonna make a response, a musical response, okay? So. Who here likes plants? Snap your fingers. Okay, now if you can keep snapping one hand, who here likes to go hiking? Pat your head. Now, now how about people who like to hear about the science of plants? Now you're gonna have to clap your hands. Yes, we love hearing about the science of plants. And do you like to socialize with your friends? If so, say thumbs up. <laughs> All right, so we, we have a lot in common. These are the primary things that CONIPS does. <laughs> and I also want to just um, warm us up because when we had a 2020 member survey, right, we found that a lot of our members were older. But if you look around the room, I think that tide is changing. So I'm going to ask you if you consider yourself a baby boomer, raise one hand. If you consider yourself Gen X, raise the other hand, I guess. <laughs> we'll put them down between, okay? That's me. Um, and how about millennials? Raise your hand. How about whatever comes after you? <laughs> oh, yes. Elizabeth, stand up, please. This is my student. She's in my botany class. And I did not recruit Elizabeth. She came to a CONIPS event, and Kelly Ambler emailed me and said, yo, get on that. You know, this woman was amazing. And so I talked to Elizabeth. She's in my class, and um, she has, runs her biology club at her high school because she's in a college course in high school. Um, and so we're planning out a project to happen with her students and CONIPS. Um, oh, I have feedback from the virtual attendees. We've got lots of Gen Xers on there. I'm guessing they have children and didn't want to get a babysitter all day. <laughs> um, and we have a ba some boomers and some Xers and some millennials on there. Um, so thank you to all for your participation. I'm really excited about our membership expansion and um, it's just all about inclusion, right, and access. I just, now that someone is in a role like mine, I can just reach out to the world more, you know? I just tell people what we're doing. And this year we have gained on average per day two members, two members per day. Um, and right now, last time I checked, which was about 48 hours ago, we had 1,652 members. Yes. Um, so 
welcome to everybody and I will fly through this because I want us to do some fun work before lunch so I'm gonna speak rather quickly but this is how I introduce the organization and since there are a lot of people here who need an introduction to the organization here we go we are a nonprofit organization dedicated to furthering the knowledge appreciation and conservation of native plants and habitats of Colorado through education, stewardship, and advocacy. So those words are important to understanding us later. Um, we were first founded in 1976. It's the year my husband was born. Yay. Um, and <laughs> basically, it's just what it is today, right? We had a collection of academic people who were very interested in plant conservation. Um, and so John Marr started us off as the first president of the Colorado Native Plant Society. We are run by a board of directors, um, and we have an operating committee, which is different than a lot of boards. Um, rather than officers, we work as a team. It's really a team mindset. Um, so a subset of the board of directors is the operating committee, but we also have chapter leaders and committee leaders on the board. Um, and we are recruiting new board members. Uh, we are recruiting chapter leadership. Um, so, you know, thinking about what does it mean to take a leadership role in CONIPS, it really means that you are going to be in this level of oversight, right? Our board is really how we make sure we're enacting our mission and we're following our mission and we're not going down rabbit holes that distract us from that central purpose. Um, so in committee leadership, chapter leadership, and board leadership, think of it as it's like you're the elder, you know, you're, you're stewarding the organization itself, not just the plants. Um, so within the organization, we have two, two orientations. We have a geographic one. And so the um, biggest question we get in the central office is, what chapter should I be in? Um, so we're working on improving that communication. We can definitely use data to figure that out based on your zip code. Um, so if you're sitting here and you're not in a chapter and you wonder which one you should be in, just talk to someone. But basically the northern chapter is in northeastern Colorado primarily and moving south, Boulder, Metro Denver, and then southeast is basically Castle Rock to the southern border in Trinidad. Um, and then on the western slope, we have the southwest chapter, which is centered in Durango. And the uh, plateau chapter is just north, again, always trying to figure out these boundaries. So uh, southwest is west of the San Luis Valley, um, but south of Montrose. And the majority of our um, plateau chapter members live in Grand Junction. Um, so there's a pretty big hole, um, and that is in the center of the donut, the part we're hearing about today, the mountains, right? We have no intermountain chapter. Um, so hopefully we will expand in both the intermountain and the northwest corner of Colorado. Um, and so then that's a geographic orientation, but we are also oriented in committees. And I think about this as like, what are our passions? What are the topics that we care about, right? So please stand up if you're an annual conference committee member. Thank you very much for helping us run this wonderful <laughs> conference. Um, we also have a conservation committee and the primary action of the conservation committee is to comment um, on NEPA documents to make a legislative uh, position. And we are, we, we have not ever well, I did one time, one time we lobbied on Capitol Hill um, for the Native Pollinating Insects Habitat Study Bill, which recently passed this summer. DNR got, yay, $300,000 um, to study native pollinating insects. And um, the community action has really been spearheaded by People and Pollinators Action Network, another nonprofit. Um, but our conservation team often um, like responds to land development and NEPA documents, rare plants, et cetera, like that. Education committee. Um, this is an act of education today. We also have our speaker series, which is monthly, and our webinar and field seminar series. Um, so we go out into the world and also through Zoom to learn, not just have fun. Um, and we won an award, Kathy Ocon, our workshops coordinator, won an award last year from the Colorado Alliance for Environmental Education for COVID response, 
we went from, even though we're boomers primarily, we went from a place where we only met in person to meeting on Zoom and our participation increased by 250%. Um, so strengths retained, we're still doing that, right? We, it's just so amazing. We off regularly have 60 to 80 people in our speaking events and they're on Zoom and they reach all corners of the state. Um, our field studies committee is really focused on like hand, on the ground field work, right? Like measuring stuff, my favorite thing. Um, and this might involve plant invent inventories, rare plant uh, studies, like restoration. We also have a restoration committee. So I see it's not in my list, um, but those two committees work closely together. Um, and then the last one I'll point out here is the horticulture committee. So in this 2020 member survey, what did you folks say? You said we want more, uh, we want more education in native plant gardening, um, and that is one of the primary actions of the horticulture committee. We sit on the Colorado Landscaping with Native Plants Conference Committee. We are also in the Colorado Native Landscaping Coalition. <laughs> There's many groups of nonprofits that are working on this together. And then behind the scenes, we have teams of people who review our grant and uh, scholarship applications. We have a lot of funding um, to support your research and your community action. So please check out the website. Um, we have botany hikes and special speakers. Um, this is Obviously, I gave this talk a while ago, um, but these are just an example of dates and things that we do on the landscape. Also, our website, every student should know about it. Um, you know, it, we don't have primary literature on there, but as far as like 100 level, 200 level engagement in native plants and ecology, our website is an amazing resource. So please um, go there and have fun while you're drinking coffee in the winter. Um, also, our pride and joy is Aquilegia, the magazine of the Colorado Native Plant Society. Um, and this is a quarterly, quarterly magazine completely run by volunteers. If Kelly Ambler is in here, she is our managing editor. Can we give her a round of applause? <laughs> and if you are on the Aquilegia team, raise your hand or make yourself known. This is the most well-oiled team within CONIPS. These folks are professional operators of this magazine publication process, all the way from recruiting the authors to publishing it. Um, and so please, if you have an article you would like to share, please reach out to us. Um, and if you want to join the design team, I think it's a great opportunity, professional development, right? You're basically on a journal team. Um, it's not a peer review journal, but it's pretty dang good. Um, and so as far as for our grad students, I find this to be a huge resume builder. Um, we also have a team of people who steward our presence in social media. If you do that, say hi. Um, this is a big deal, folks. This is actually a huge deal because although we have 1,600 members in our Facebook group, we have over 10,000 people. And in our Facebook page, I don't know what the current number is, but roughly 4,000. Um, so there's 14,000 people who are following us on Facebook, no matter what generation they're in, and we need help to continue to expand our mission by sharing our knowledge. Um, and so I wanna just tell you what are some of the solutions to some problems that we see facing our landscape that we heard today, right? It's a great follow-up after Tom's talk. Um, so the main thing is we need to get seeds to the right place. Um, and I did give a talk about my own research in a previous meeting, and you might have be familiar. Um, but essentially, you know, the loop in the restoration, the part that is not solved is the seeds. How can we provide the seeds um, at low or no cost so that restoration is a no cost proposition, right? It doesn't have to always be that we need money to solve our problems. We can use our volunteers and our hands um, to solve the problems that we're facing in the restoration context. And we are doing this on the land by partnering with organizations, right? Partnering with nurseries, um, partnering with municipal 
horticulture departments um, and working with our consulting firms and our academic partnerships. Um, so closing the cycle. Um, essentially, native plant materials are not currently available, but we as a membership are making that possible. Um, I am giving a talk at COSA on Monday, Colorado Open Space Alliance, with the city horticulturalist, Alex Crochet, to whom we have given over, I don't know how many seeds, but he has now 7,000 native plants growing in our city nursery. Um, in our city greenhouses. And those are all slated for demonstration gardens um, for new landscaping code. We have one down in the Colorado Springs and all the, through the front range this is happening. So turning our seeds into plants that are going into demonstration gardens, turning our seeds into restoration opportunities. We also got an Aiken Audubon grant to do woody stem propagation, which is going really well for the riparian species development. And also Alex and I are basically on a traveling road show. You know, next week we are bringing plants to nurseries on the Western Slope and helping them to know how to propagate these plants so that in 2023 we can have a plant sale in our Western Slope chapters. Yay. Um, and <laughs> When I do my research, this is me, this is my personality, right? And I am a Dr. Gaddis, but I'm very approachable. And so uh, down here on the left is my research site. Rocky Mountain Field Institute uh, volunteers went in there with rakes, scarified the soil, and threw these native seeds down, and we put a light cover of free city mulch over it. Okay, I did not think this was going to work. I had just moved here from the mountains, right? So I'm a bit more familiar, and I previously had studied riparian ecology. This works, man. Restoring the seed bank is working, and we're seeing it work in horticultural contexts, in natural um, contexts as well, and also in our efforts to plant the seeds in the nurseries. Um, and so everything we've been doing in these realms is really helping to meet lots of federal strategies. So uh, something was just mentioned in the last talk about how do we get the seeds. So there is now a national revegetation strategy. Um, and this has been uh, promulgated by Biden and uh, like the Forest Service, USDA, all sorts of agencies have lots of money now. Um, and actually we just got a huge contract to collect seed with the Forest Service um, to answer the National Revegetation Strategy. So look for more fun projects in that realm, both horticulture and wildland restoration. Um, also, you know, Kathy, our workshop coordinator, she's a highly accomplished education professional, and I am working with her especially to um, expand our youth programs because that was another thing that came out of the 2020 member survey was, you folks think we should be talking to young people, um, and we're doing it, so we're, we're doing our best. Um, so we are running a pilot curriculum right now at Camp Shady Brook, um, and in the shoulder seasons, Camp Shady Brook has school groups that come up. This is in Deckers in Douglas County. And uh, this is all the pictures on the right side. Um, these students came up. They learned about native seeds and restorations and what does it mean to be native. And they, they collected seeds, used hand lenses. It was very exciting. And um, I, we trained people who work at the camp to run the curriculum. So, as I stand here now, someone else is teaching the program for us, <laughs> which I think is great because in all these uh, all these uh, engagements, CONIPS should maintain the position as thought leader, right? We can't do the direct service for all the places, but we can take the fact that we know more about native plants and really lean on it, you know, pat ourselves on the back and reach out to other organizations and say, oh, you wanna teach a program about plants? Well, here's how you could do it. And this is all to standards and whatnot. And then on the left side, you can see my own college students because yes, this is not my full-time job. Um, I teach at UCCS, Resource Management and Conservation. These are my students right now. Um, and they met up with one of our nursery partners and they implemented a native grass garden at the nursery. 
they learned a bunch about our new landscaping code and policies. Um, so there's opportunities. If you have college students that you steward as a professor, um, or you are a student and want to get out there with your academic life, please reach out to us. We can make that possible, that happen without any trouble at all. Um, and in COVID times, not only did we increase participation 250% with our webinars, we really got into like technology-based citizen science. Um, and so we participate in both iNaturalist and Budburst phenology project, um, another opportunity for everyone involved. So if I haven't made you super excited yet, um, I hope that you will consider getting involved after this meeting. Um, and, oh, sorry, these are older slides. Um, our next event is on uh, the 25th. Kate Hogan will be giving a talk in our special speaker series. And the last thing I just wanted to show you was, at any time, you can just not talk at the microphone. Um, hold on one second. So if you go to the event calendar, um, please know that you are welcome to join events in any chapter. It doesn't matter where you live. Just go look at this calendar. And if you have a day off, um, you have something to do. <laughs>